going to get going. Uh, net versus baseline. Is it better to play at the baseline or better to play at the net? Um, four juniors here, some of our top juniors. So we got Drew Phelan. Jim, can you hear me? Um, yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay, uh, there's a big smoke. Yeah, there's a big smoke. Remove the logo. Oh, remove the logo. They're saying remove the logo. Right in the middle of your right, screen. Can you see me now? Yeah, good. Yeah, great. All right. So we got, uh, uh, these are some of our top players. We got Drew Phelan with a blue hat. Um, and then we got Jack Morrison. Stone, how do you say your last name? Chahi, and then uh, Brooke Say. Um, well, what we're going to do is hey guys. Um, we're going to play some doubles points. And we're going to obviously start off with one up, one back, which is a, a typical formation. And then we're going to have uh, two at the net against baseline. We're going to look at numbers. Um, but obviously, um, two at the net versus staggered at the baseline. The two at the net should win. The, uh, oh, these earphones. Right? You have a, when you're at the net, you have a, a bigger target area, your volley potential angle is greater, and the opponents have less time. Um, let's have uh, one up, one back in the ad court here, one up, one back in the ad court over there. So we're going to start off with uh, one up, one back in the ad court. So other side, Brooke, Brooke ad court. So if we say ad court in tennis, that means the baseline person starts on the left side, because if the score was add in, add out, the person will be serving on the left side. Other side, Stone, we're doing one up, one back in the ad court. So terminologies. All right, here we go. We're just going to play out some points. And obviously, we're not going to, we're not going to dissect every point. But you'll see, basically, it's almost like a random, a random pattern. Oh, I think I might have hit the line. And these kids are a bit nervous because they're on TV. What's the first thing you notice? If the first thing you notice, any observations straight? I mean, just looking at, looking at these points, any observations? Is there a pattern at the moment? Well, it's like everything's going cross court. Actually, everything's going, everything's going to the net person. If you look at it, they're hitting on, they're hitting on the, they're hitting on, if you look at the center strap, they're actually hitting on um, the, the side of the center strap, the net person's on. They're actually not hitting cross court. Oh, we'll rotate round with spot clockwise. Jack over here, Brooke around the other side. We'll do a couple more points, then we're going to obviously. We have a different baseline person. And keep in mind, you know, the baseline people are missing. There's a good cross court from Stone. See, they're basically hitting down the line all the time. They're not really hitting cross court at the moment. That's what's happening. There's again another another shot. That that'll be when we say down the line, we mean the ball is on when he's hitting the ball. The center strap is on this side of the center strap, and so really Drew standing in the wrong place to poach that at the moment. But really, that'll be considered a down the line shot. But keep in mind in doubles, when he's when he has to hit cross court. The target area is less than 10 degrees. So it's very, very hard in doubles. There's another shot down the line. Jack's hitting down the line. He did get it below the net cord. But it's very hard in doubles when your target area is less than 10 degrees to hit that small target area. And if you've got an active net person, people at the net are moving. Well done, Brooke tried to. There's another shot down the line. So it is very, very hard to hit down the line. But if we actually charted this match, if we actually charted this match and we looked at uh, points being won and lost, if we looked at points being won and lost, uh, it'll be very, very random. Stone, move that ball to the corner there. We'll do two more, then we're going to change it. Nice cross-court depth there. So you can see some people are some people on the other side are winning points, some people on this side are winning points. There's no real clear pattern. That should have been poached. Good depth from Stone. Nice cross court there. There's a shot down the line. Brooke can poach it. Well done. Um, so not a lot of cross court stuff. All right, rotate round spot clockwise. 
if we played out points, if we actually played out points and we said, right, first one to 10, the score would be like 10, eight or 10, nine. It would be basically a random, you'll be some people on that side and make a mistake. Some people on this side and make mistakes. And let's actually do that. Let's play the five. Here we go. Zero, zero to five. And you'll see, you know, when you have a staggered formation, it's basically that there's no clear pattern. Good depth from Brooks. He had a deep ball cross court. Zero, one. That was down the line. Good post from Stone. Good passing shot from Brooke down at Stone's feet. Here we go. Zero, two. Hitting down the line again. Zero, three. Good, that was a good, good, good choice of shot from Drew. Zero, four. One, four. Two, four. Obviously, Stone's getting better at the net now. Brooks still hitting to Stone and Stone's getting better at the net. Look at that. Three, four. You'll also notice Stone. Well, now he's got his racket back. Stone's actually not waiting in the right position. Four each. And so this is what I mean by a random pattern, right? It's, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's got its close games. It, there's mistakes on both sides. A four, five. All right, rotate round one spot. Did you notice Stone had his racket down like this when the ball was in play? He didn't have his racket up. That's why he missed the first, he missed, he missed the first three shots. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to have um, two up against, against um, Stag at the baseline. So Stone, move up to the service box line. Right, so net versus baseline. The hypothesis is that two people at the net should beat two people at the baseline now cons regularly, very consistently, because their target area is bigger, the opponents have less time. All right, move up to the kill zone, Brooke. Brooke's actually getting ahead of the thing. All right, so Brooke's in the kill zone. Stone's, stone's at the service box line. Now, what's wrong, with, what's wrong with the formation Stone and Brooke are at the moment? If you look at where Stone's standing, where Brooke's standing, what's wrong with that? Any ideas? Tracy, can you hear me? They could get lobbed. They, they could get lobbed, yeah, we've done our purpose. Stone's no. standing on the sideline. Stone's standing on a single sideline. He should be standing in the middle, right? He's covering the sideline. Now in doubles, if you divide the court by three columns, 20, 36 feet wide, divide by three is 12, three 12 feet columns. Someone's got to be covering the middle column. At the moment, the middle's wide open. So Stone should be basically about here, right? And it looks like visually when Stone stands here, this, this, this territory is wide open, but that'll be very, very hard. In order for Jack to hit that target, he would have to hit an off-pace rolling board down, a uh, dipping down quickly, which Stone would be able to react to. So he wants Stone close to the middle. All right, let's, let's, play out some, let's, let's play out some points now, see what happens. And Brooke was right to stand on the service box line. Keep in mind, Brooke, that Jack doesn't love very much. Oh, dear. Good volley, good effort on the volley. And you can see her racket face is a little bit open there. But now it's very difficult for Jack. It's very difficult for Jack to actually win points. And he had an outstanding passing shot there, off pace down to the feet. You know, and certainly. Good volley there. Well done, Brooke. You know, Jack's hitting very good passing shots. Keep that, you know, that, that's what you should do as a baseline. He's hit off pace. That was a bad passing shot. He hit, he hit through the court. But really, when you have two net people at the net and two are staggered, the net people should win most of the time. Lovely passing shot again from Jack. That was an excellent passing shot. I don't know why I'm having trouble with these earphones. Let's play out some points. Here we go. Up to five, zero, zero. High volley. So one zero to the net team. And we were criticized Brooke. Brooke hit the ball back deep, which is a mistake. So he hit it back too slow. But one zero. He's trying to lob now. So the, now the pressure's on. We've added a score line. So now he's gone back to lobbing. Or uh, it's a good shot because Brooke's close to the, to the kill zone. That's a lovely passing shot there from, from Stone. Lovely cutaway angle. Well done. Three zero. So net versus baseline. And keep in mind, Jack's left-handed. 
So we're giving him a courtesy feed. He's hitting forehands. Jack's backhand's actually uh, very, very good as well. 4-0. 5-0. All right, rotate round one spot. So that, unlike the last game where it's 4-5, four, 5-4, five, five, four, it's basically a random pattern. Now we have a clear pattern. There's a winning, there's a winning pattern. But Jack's left-handed, right? So he's a left-handed player in the ad court. He should have done better. Drew is right-handed. Drew's got a backhand. Drew's going to be hitting backhands. Maybe the odd forehands. We're going to do the same thing again. Here we go. Zero, zero, up to five. Actually, we'll warm up a little bit because uh, let's warm up uh, Brooke and Jack. Jack hasn't warmed up his volleys. We'll do a few warm-ups. Lovely stop volley there. Good passing shot. And Drew's going for a low percentage shot now. He's behind the baseline. It's a shoulder height ball and he's going down the line. That's a better passing shot. Well done. All right, let's play out some points. Zero, zero, up to five. And keep in mind, Drew's getting a courtesy feed. He's not really under any pressure. One, zero, two, zero. It's anxiety attacks. You know, club tennis, that's a good lob. Out, three, zero. He would have to hit a perfect lob to beat Brooke when she's standing on the service box line. That's an outstanding lob there. Good backtracking from Brooke. Three, one. And the lob's an indication. This means that I'm not feeding fast enough. Here we go. Three, one. That's an outstanding passing shot from Drew. Three, two. I'm oh, sorry, Brooke. Well done, Jack. Four, two. So random score, four, three. And again, Drew's getting a courtesy feed. If I fell a little bit faster, and the approach shot's important. Four, four. You know, Jack's nervous. He's standing upright. He's not moving fast. So that's a factor. But that combined with the fact that, uh, um, you know, the courtesy feeds. Rotate round one spot. Well done, Drew. We'll criticize Jack there. He's not really ready to play at the net yet. We're going to do one more thing. One more, one more go at this. Um, we're going we're gonna to actually hit an approach shot now. Obviously, you know, we're warming up the players. You know, they're nervous. But now we're actually going to put, put uh, the baseline person, Paul Stone, under pressure. We're actually going to hit an approach shot that's going to that's going to make him, you know, Drew is basically teeing off. Now we're going to make it a bit harder. Here we go. Zero, zero up to five. So the approach shot's a factor. Here we go. So it's a little bit faster now. And you can see now Stone's in trouble. I mean, he's got to worry about, he's got to worry about a, uh, a hitting, a, hitting a passing shot uh, with balls coming at him very, very fast. That's an outstanding passing shot by Stone, down at the feet of the net person. One, two. Two, two. But, you know, court geometry, math, right? Jack and Drew on this side of the net have physics on their side. They should win, even if it's a close game. Two, three. Stone's winning. That's a lovely half ground stroke from Jack. Lovely volley there. 2-4 on the line from Brooke. 3-4. Obviously, uh, Stone has points to play with now. That's a brutal feed. Sorry, Stone. Four each. So, critical point. Let's see what happens. Good volley. So, the net team won. All right, rotate round one spot. Now, obviously, we had the... Uh, you can see there, really, someone actually watching this tape would say, well, there was one 5-0 score, but most of the score lines were close. It was like the staggered. And that's true, right? As a coach, we look at these, we look at them playing out points. And we say they have to spend more time working on volleys. When they're at the net, they don't look confident. They don't look confident at the net. They're not on their toes. They're not reacting fast. And we give credit to the baseline person. They're hitting balls down at the net person's feet. So... There, we would say they have to work on low, low volleys, defensive volleys. So as a coach, we look at this and we'd say we need to spend more time working on low volleys. Now, we had, uh, we had Stone up in the kill zone. We actually did that on purpose because I wanted, to I wanted to, the, the baseline person to lob down the line, which is what happens in league tennis, ladies tennis, men's tennis. With this formation, um, once they respect the volley, they start lobbing down the line. And so in order for this to work at, at, at club tennis, league tennis, we have, uh, we'd have Stone back to the service box line. So move back to the service box line, Stone. Obviously, these kids don't lob. They like to hit through the cork. But in league tennis, when they see that formation, they're going to lob all the time. So now we're going to have a situation 
where I'm going to feed a Borg. Um, and now Brooks' first shot has to be a lob. Now, in a real league match, uh, they would go get down to the feet. But now uh, Brooks, Brooks going to have to lob on the first one. So let's, let's see what happens. Here we go. Brooke, you got to hit a lob on the first one. After that, you can do what you want. So she's now lobbing. And when you're standing at the service box line, Stone and Drew are at the service box line. They're actually closer to the baseline than they are to the net. Sorry, Brooke. And so um, it's, it's, it's very hard to get lobs because they're actually only 18 feet from the baseline. They're 21 feet from the net. Stone and, you know, the kids. So Stone and Drew are obviously pounding overheads. When you start a match, you want to roll overheads in and get rid of the butterflies. They're just going for broke. So obviously club players, club players generally uh, play a bit more consistently. But now with the lob, it's very easy to cover the shot. You know, with these live board, these live board drills, um, you never know what's going to happen. The one plus is that the baseline people are hitting off-pace shots at the feet of the net, pe the net person, and that's A plus there. I wasn't expecting that. You know, so if you're at the baseline, you're playing against net rushes. Um, hitting an off-pace shot at the feet of the, the net people is what you can see here. It's very, very effective. Nice deep ball back. Well done, Stone. Remember, if you're a defensive volley, back to the baseline person. If you're not hitting it fast, an offensive volley at the net person. Nice overhead speed. Well done. And as Drew gets more confident, um, as Drew gets more confident, you can hit faster. But when you're starting off a match, you want to roll overheads in. That was in. Well done, Brooke. All right, rotate round one spot. Obviously, at the moment, we'll do one more lob. At the moment, I'm feeding the ball in. And I'm giving them, I'm giving them a courtesy feed, basically. You know, if I was feeding like this, uh, they'll be in trouble. Uh, but I'm giving them a slow feed because I want the net put people to work a little bit. But let's do one more round. Uh, got it. First shot's got to be a lob jack. So he's lobbing it. You know, when you come to the net, you know, members coming to the net, uh, you know, you have, to, you have to love hitting overheads. You know, it's a good wrist turn from Stone. You want to hit, try and get it in, though, Stone. And as you, as you play more tennis, or as you, as you get more confident, well done. So now Brooks in a position where it's going to be very hard for Jack to lob down the line. He could do it, but it'd be very, very hard. Lovely underspin, passing shot in the channel. Well done, Brooke. Now, obviously, so far, we've done a scenario where the net person has already camped out of the net. They're not hitting the approach shot. Look at that low board down at the feet again. Good volleys. But what we're going to do now is we're going to add the approach shot. All right, uh, rotate round one spot, folks. I'm sure they're getting thirsty, but... We'll do some old school coaching where they didn't get a they don't get a drink of water for a whole hour. All right, back to the baseline, Brooke. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the approach shot. Right, the relationship between the approach shot and the volley. The better the approach shot, the easier your volley is going to be. You know, the, the the slower the approach shot, the shorter it is, then the harder the volley is going to be. You know, keep in mind that in this drill today that I was giving the baseline person basically a courtesy feed. Uh, so they had, they, you know, they, they had the option to hit the, roll the ball down at the person's feet. Now that's, now that's not going to happen. Drew's going to hit an approach shot. He's going to come in. And so now Brooke's going to have to react to an approach shot. But let's play at some points. So the relationship between the approach shot and the volley overhead. Well, we're going to play out some points now, see what happens. Here we go, Drew. So he's hitting an approach, sorry, he's hitting an approach shot coming in. That was not a very good feed, that was short. Here we go, let's give him a higher one. I just been approach shot. So he should be going cross court. He went down the line that time. But again, in doubles, it's very, very hard. It's very, very hard in doubles uh, to hit cross court consistently because the target area is so small. And it's been a pro shot. Look at the depth. Look at the volley. Look at the, the passing shot from, from Brook. So that was a typical point, you know. And keep in mind, Drew's approach shot was, was, would look slow on camera, but because it was under spin, it was bouncing low, it was deep. Brooke hit a high ball to Stone. Stone should have hit a put away volley. 
Better volley from Stone in the channel. That's an outstanding approach shot. You can tell, you can tell they're going to win the point before they hit it. You know, and give credit to Brooke. Brooke hit, Brooke under pressure hit a board down below the net cord at Drew's feet. So that's a very, that's very rare what happened there. You don't see that very often. Jack Morrison poaching. One more, then we change it. Good approach shot. Rotate round one spot. Underspin approach shot. Drew is hitting underspin approach shots. Underspin is better than top spin. Underspin lands deeper, bounces lower. It also off pace underspin gives you time to get to a good volley position. All right, let's have, let's have Stone hitting some approach shots coming in. And he's playing against a left-handed player. Who, uh, so, so Jack is going to be hitting forehand passing shots. Jack's backhand, I think, is actually better. But Jack's got no holes in his ground stroke game. So Stone now is hitting top spin approach shots. So the ball's going to land shorter. It's going to bounce higher. And it's going to make it easier for Jack to hit passing shots. See how the ball lands shorter. And of course, Jack is camped out two feet behind the baseline. Uh, most members, club tennis wouldn't be that. They'll be inside the baseline. That's okay. But you can see the ball's bouncing higher. There's a put away shot. Again, down the line. Brooks ready. Brooks moving up to the kill zone. Well done. You know, watching this tape, you know, the, two, the takeaways is, you know, the pluses they got outstanding. The, the baseline people, they're, their passing shots are outstanding, off pace at the feet. Um, the, two put, the, the, the two takeaways are they've got to work on low volleys, but the baseline person is hitting down the line too much. I mean, if you look at the tape, that's what you'd see. And it worked in the last drill, but in this drill now, where they're having to deal with their, their, their colleagues' approach. That's an outstanding passing shot from Jack. Well done, off pace. Let's play out some points up to seven. Here we go, zero, zero up to seven. Stone has to come in. Now, based on Stone's approach shot, even though he is hitting tops and it's landing short, we would expect him to win quite easily. Well done. Excellent volley from Brooke, close to close. At the net person, wasn't very hard in the channel. Zero, one. I would be amazed if Stone and Brooke lost this match. Outstanding lob there. We would criticize Brooke though. That was a hanging ball. Brooke's not moving. One each. There's a put away shot. Well done. Oh, Stone let it drop below the net cord, but he got the volley he wanted. 2 1. 3 1. There's another good, there's a volley from the got the volley he wanted. 4 1 to the baseline person, though. Stone's missing put away volleys. And these guys haven't played tennis in a while. 5-1. Up to 7. Play up to 7. Six, one. Six, two. but Jack's got points to play with. It's reverse psychology. You know, when you're at, when you're at, a, when you're at a convention or a conference and you say this person's going to lose the match, right? Jack Morrison now steps up because he wants to prove me wrong. Stone's nervous. All right, well, ro rotate one more round. We're going to do one more round, and then we'll take questions. All right, Brooks got, Brooke has an underspin approach shot. That a qualifier is Stone was hitting top spin approach shots. If Brooke can get his, her underspin, underspin approach shot, here we go. All right, zero, zero, up to seven. One, zero, one. Brooke should really be hitting cross court, the approach shot cross court. Nice. And that's just a nightmare to deal with. You know, we talk about underspin approach shots. So now the ball, you can see with Stone, Stone's balls were landing around the service box line. They were basically bouncing uh, waist tight for Jack. Now Brooks shots are landing five feet from the baseline. Zero, two. Look at that approach shot. Just an absolute nightmare to deal with. All right, no more. Sorry, Joe, I'm in your way. No more forehands for Brooke. Let's give her a backhand. Here we go. Zero, three. 
toss been backhand for Brooke. Zero four. Lovely approach shot. Oh, Drew. Well, that was the angle we were talking about. Don't cover the sidelines because it's very hard to hit. Drew went for it. It's a low percentage shot. He almost made it. Zero five. And a rare mistake from Brooke, but approach shot. Her unspin approach shot is one of her best shots. One five for Brooke now. One six. Try and hit cross court Brooke rather than at stone. Just tapped it. That's a lovely approach shot. Getting the overhead she wants. Lovely approach shot. Two six. Back up Brooke. You're way in front. Two six. Obviously, Brooke actually got the overhead she wanted there. Three six. Obviously, very common in tennis. Closing out matches. Closing out a match, one of the hardest things to do. That's an outstanding approach shot. Oh, I think that was out, but good effort, Drew. All right, folks, uh, grab a basket, pick the balls up, folks. All right, any questions? Can you hear me, Tracy? Yeah. Oh, I don't have any questions. So the takeaway is you recommend. Say again. Hello. Yes, so I say again. I said, so the takeaway is you recommend doing an approach shot and both being more on the service box line area. The, the approach, so I say the question again. I'm trying to get into a better. And say it, it's kind of a, well, are you saying that the takeaway of this is that your best format would be coming in an approach shot and both of you being? Box yeah, line? yes, for club players, yeah, for club okay. for club players. These guys, they're young, you know, they 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 they, they just they, you know they they're athletes. And they just like to hit through the court. Um, um, the, in a match, what would happen is, you know, in, in a real match, and you see that in, in team practices. You know, team practices, people don't really lob because they want to play. They want to hit the ball and get exercise. And in a match, they lob consistently. So, but yeah, if you're standing where one's in the kill zone, one's at the service box line, you'll get lobbed down the line incessantly. So when you come to that, you have to. You have to basically be both on the service box line. Um, the, the last, um, the last duel there where Brooke was hitting underspin approach shots was very, very, you know, um, that was a very. You could just see um, it's very, very effective. They're landing deeper and bouncing lower. But yeah, the idea is you tell your partner you're coming in. You um, you're both standing on a service box line. You hit an underspin approach shot. And the good thing about underspin, it's not just the fact that it travels faster, it lands deeper and bounces lower. But if you miss hit it, if your racket face is too open and you miss hit it it becomes a short angled fade shot or a drop shot. And the person, you know, you might be doing it by accident, but the person doesn't know. But yeah, the idea is you're both at the service box line. You're, you're, you're hitting overheads and you've just got a bigger target area. Um, you've got to love hitting overheads. A lot of people like staying at the baseline and playing defensive, but really doubles, um, if, you, if you're comfortable at the net hitting, you know, these kids here, they need to work on low volleys. You know, they're getting balls down at their feet. I didn't expect that today. Um, that's why you should never work with animals and kids. But uh, we're low board down at the feet. Um, they got to work on, on neutralizing that shot. Mem club players, if we had four club players out here, they would, that would be very easy for them. They, I mean, they're very good at low boards from the service box line. These players, um, they don't hit enough of them. Um, but yeah, you know, you want at the service box line hitting volleys. Um, and it, just, it just gives you a bigger target here. The opponents have less time. Interesting. It was interesting to see because when you practice yeah. it, I don't think you really see it because you're so involved in it. And interesting to see. Yeah, yeah that good. was good, Jim. Thanks, folks. All right. Well, we'll let you go. And um, um, next week's uh, next week's talk is probably going to be on match preparation. How to prepare for a match. Great. Thanks, good guys. luck at the vet. Which animal oh, yeah. is sick? She has a cat. She has a cat that's sick. Oh, I'm sorry. Well, good luck at the vet. Thank you. Thank guys. you. <laughs> Bye, Tracy. Bye. See you next week. All right.